Hey there, how is it going? It's been a while, I know it's been a while. I haven't, I haven't been up to much. Well, actually I have, my life has gone round full circle, I think. Anyways, I came on here today because I wanted to talk to you all about the COVID. I was one of them diehard, it's a government conspiracy type of thing talking to people, telling them that I wasn't going to have that COVID shot because it was a conspiracy from the government, and uh, that was wrong. I, I dodged and darted it for a year and a half or more, and then late the last few days of August, my daughter's boyfriend had it from work. His boss was letting people come to work sick. He went to work sick in all but about two days, and he was too sick to work. And, uh, anyways, yeah, he went to work sick with that COVID. And he, uh, man, see, I get fog. You get a foggy brain with the COVID. So, he, he, anyways, he came home. He gave it to her. He, her and I both came down with it about the same day. That Monday, she went to work, and then she come home, and she said she was feeling really bad. She got home early. I said, what's going on? You got off early. And she said, I'm not feeling good. I think she said, I think I might have the COVID. She said she's going to go to work the next day. She was going to go get a test. I said, okay, well, I went home that night and I was feeling bad. And then the next day, boy, I knew I had it because I was feeling terrible. That was Tuesday. And then I, worked, I looked on the computer and they said they were giving away free tests down at the health department. So I went down there. They had a line outside with nurses and stuff handing them out. They had an instant test for my teenager. It gave you 20 minutes, you had the results. And then I had to have, mine had to be shipped by UPS over to Birmingham. So uh, Tuesday night, Tuesday evening before they closed, my daughter took it down there, my, my 41 year old daughter. She took it down there and dropped it off at the UPS. The next morning I got a thing from, uh, I got an email from the laboratory telling me that, the that they had received my test and that they would let me know when they got the results. Well, by that evening, I had the results saying that I had the Delta strain of COVID. And man, I, by Friday, I was feeling so bad. Now, see, I got it on Monday evening. I started feeling bad. Friday, I was feeling so bad. I was hurting everywhere, just everywhere. My head hurt. Oh, I couldn't hardly see, couldn't open my eyes. And my, oh... I couldn't hardly pee. It was terrible. I couldn't, I wasn't drinking enough. And he, the doctor sent me in. I called him twice and left a message and his nurse called me back and we set up a Zoom meeting. Well, I couldn't even open my eyes or lift my head or anything. He was talking to me and then he was telling me that he was gonna send me in for an infusion and he had some prescriptions he was gonna call in and he wanted me to start those prescriptions and then go in for my infusion on Monday because it was too late that Friday and they didn't do them on the weekends so Monday we went hey that's enough Monday we went over there Penny I said that's enough Monday we went over there my daughter drove me over there to the hospital and she said that she uh, we sat in the parking lot and finally they came over to my car and they told my daughter come over here and drop her off so we went over there by that entrance and they said hold on before you get out we have to take your temperature and your stat saturation level so I said all right well my saturation level was like in the low 80s or high 90 high 70s and then the my temperature was 104.1 so they said that disqualified me from being able to get that infusion and they told my daughter to drive me around to the emergency department, which I don't know why they did that, because they're, they're a stabilizing hospital. They don't participate in my Humana. And so I had to go to, um, I, went, I went in there. I'm going to get a big bill from them, I'm sure, because they don't participate with my insurance company. I should have went over here to this other hospital that I'm insured with. So, they gave me a bag of water 
bag of the sodium, whatever, that they give you when you're dehydrated, because I was starting to get dehydrated. They gave me that, and they gave me a steroid, and they gave me some Tylenol, and a cough syrup, like something else. I don't know what all they gave me. Something to calm me down. And um, after I had all that, we were sitting there waiting for the man to deliver a tank of a oxygen for me. It took him forever. I didn't get out of there until seven, seven or eight hours later. So we got home that night, and they had dropped off a, looks like a suitcase. You plug it in, and it has a, has this, all this stuff attached to it. We got all this tubing right here like this. And it stretches clear across my floor. I don't have it on now because I'm almost out. I'm lightheaded. I think I'm going to put it on before I walk in there. But So anyway, yep, that's what happened. I got the COVID. And then they sent me home with that oxygen tank. Tuesday, my daughter went to the pharmacy to fill the prescriptions from the hospital. Because they gave me two other ones. And they gave me a cough syrup that had codeine in it. And I can't have codeine. I'm allergic to it. Well... They sure enough did give her codeine, and she t I, she didn't say nothing to me, and then she said, uh, I said, how much of this am I supposed to take, because I couldn't hardly see with my eyes, and she said, told me how much I was supposed to take, so I took it, and then about 30 minutes later, I, I was having problems breathing, my throat was starting to close, it was hurting, and uh, I told her, Sissy, you're going to have to take me to the emergency room, I can't breathe, honey. So she took me up there to the emergency, and they fixed me up. They kept me. They said, you can't go home because you are dehydrated. Your kidneys are starting to close down, and we think you have this other thing, too. They, some, they took a culture of some sort. Anyway, so they did all that. And then I uh, stayed for eight days. They were good people. They and they put me, the first 24 hours or so, I was downstairs in the overflow ICU until they found me a bed up on the COVID floor. They have a whole floor for the COVID. And so they took me up there to the COVID floor, and, man, they treat you real good. They come in there with all that protective gear on. They look funny. But anyway, it's, they were very, very nice, and I had a good, well, as good experience as you can have if you have the COVID. The only thing that kept bugging me was they had a, okay, they had me hooked up to that oxygen, oxygen meter, and then they had me on oxygen, and they had to keep, they, like one lady kept coming in there and turning the oxygen down because they were trying to get me discharged, and then they, every time she'd turn it down, that thing would start going off, so then somebody else would come back in there and turn it back up, and finally they got it stabilized, they had to get me a new lead for my finger two or three new leads and because I was sweating bad and um, yeah then the day I went home I was glad to go home but I started getting uh, diarrhea and you can't make it to the toilet you had to wear I had to wear diapers big, for grown-ups that's pretty sad 61 years old and you have to go sit on and you have to have a diaper on had to keep taking showers because it didn't make it to the commode in time. And my daughter, she's drink steady telling me, drink, Mama, drink. You need more water? She'd bring me bottles of water. You need more water? You need more water? She's, she's taking good care of me, my 41-year-old my daughter. And um, taking care of my little puppy for me, taking her out to the potty and everything. She's, she's still at the house till I start feeling a little better. I'm not supposed to be out today, but I'm out anyway. And I'm out, I can feel myself, I'm out of breath. Well, anyways. So that was my COVID experience. Oh my word, don't, don't think it's a conspiracy. Go get that shot. I mean, that's your right not to have it if you want. don't want it. But I'm telling you what you might have to deal with. And some people, I watched a video about a guy, he had the Delta strain, 39 years old, and he died. A few hours before he died, he was sitting up in a chair talking. And then something happened.
My, I start, they got me up and started giving me uh, occupational therapy because I started getting uh, ahead. When I went into the second hospital, I was getting just a touch of pneumonia in my right lung. So they had to give me, a, they gave me a whole bunch of steroids while I was there. They gave me shots in my stomach to keep me from getting blood clots in my legs. They gave me, uh, man, I don't know what all they gave me. I, I kept asking them for Tylenol about every six or eight hours because I was kept getting that headache. That headache stayed until I, they sent me home like eight days after I went in there. And then that was like the first of the week, Tuesday, I think it was. And then, or Wednesday, maybe. And then it was Sunday evening before I, I felt the COVID lift. But I still couldn't breathe. I'm still having to be on this oxygen. Everywhere I go, I have to have the oxygen. I don't got it on now, but I might have to put it on in a minute. <clears throat> so, I got that suitcase by my bed. I have to lay there, and I'm sure my saturation is going to be in the 70s when I get back up there. But, uh, yeah, I, I can't, like, if I move around too much, I just start sweating like a whore in church. And then you got the COVID, the, uh, not COVID, but the, the oxygen thing. You have to have be tethered to that damn oxygen everywhere. Walk across the apartment and I get, I just get so tired. And every, I'm so tired. I just can't get enough energy. And <clears throat> I just pray that, I mean, if, I'm telling you what, if it wasn't for Jesus Christ up there, I, I would be goner. I'd have been a goner. I had too many people praying for me. It wasn't my time. Jesus was telling me, don't be so stupid. Next time, if they offer you something, take it. But, yeah, he, uh, I just hope my daughter didn't get that COVID. Because I'll tell you what happened. She, whenever the day I went into the hospital, the teenager, my teenager was coming down with it. So my other daughter, she thought she'd be better off over there at her house. So she, she didn't even call me and ask me anything. She just came over here and got my teenager and took her over there. And she kicked her little baby out of her room and put my daughter in there to quarantine her in the bedroom. And then she fed her and, and gave her whatever she needed she did for her. And the baby had to stay in her mama's room. And then uh, she was there for about two weeks because I told her, don't come home. I love you, but don't come home right now because I don't want, if you still carrying that, I don't want you to bring it back home to me after I'd already gotten out of the hospital. But because I was already still feeling, I, I wasn't feeling as bad. I was ready to go home from the hospital, but I, you know, they called me up and said, since you're on this kind of a program, you don't have to leave if you don't feel as if you're ready, you can, take, you can appeal it. And I said, no, I'm ready to go home. I, but I, I just didn't have no energy. And my head was hurting still. And uh, so I went, anyways, yeah. I got some relief from that headache. And then when I got home and got my got all my medicines, like I have to take, um, what is that stuff? Lyrica, and I didn't have any Lyrica at the hospital. When I got home and got my Lyric, I started feeling a lot better. But the, man, you don't want to get that COVID. I'm telling you, take that shot. I advise you to take that shot. It's, you, you can investigate it and see what kind of um, program they've had running with that, how much testing they've done on it, how many uh, bad ill effects they've had with it. I'm going to call, my doctor told me, consider this your first shot. In, in 90 days, you can go get another shot or a booster. So when it's 90 days, I'm going to call him and ask him what kind he wants me to get, where do you want me to go get it. And I'm going to go get it and get if there's any side effects. I'm going to get advised of the side effects. I wanted to dye my hair, but when my lungs are so weak right now, it's terrible. I got that air run pumping full blast. It's on 68. Give me some fresh air. Yeah, so that's what's going on in my life, y'all. The COVID. Corona. And it ain't... It's, you, know, you might watch them memes and find them entertaining, but it, it's... Having it is no joke. And my teenager, she didn't have it that bad. 
But now, like today, my daughter's work, my daughter's very responsible. She called, her work called me and said, we can't get a hold of her. She was supposed to log on her computer at 8.30, and she's not logged on. We can't get a hold of her. So I got both of these half, mostly empty. This one might have five minutes left on it. Ten minutes, maybe. Anyways, they uh, said that, I think I'm going to have to put this on. I'm getting run out of air. Hold on, let me get this on. Yeah, we'll turn this on for a minute. Turn that up. There we go. Now I'll be all right for a little while. So yeah, they had they had they had me go check on her. I went over there to check on her. And she said she she was coughing, and I said you don't have the COVID, do you? She said no. I think it's allergies. She had gone camping this past weekend. She came. My daughter didn't say anything. She came in last night and said I'm home and gave me a hug. And she said the other one she had gone home. She didn't say anything about her not feeling well. Well, she took two different kinds of cold medicine, mixed them together, and so she was loopy this morning. The baby didn't get to school. They didn't, and when I didn't find out till later, I couldn't take her to school because they said she would have been marked absent anyway. So I just cooked her some lunch, and I told her, you know, the house rules. You can't come outside. You can't, don't, don't let anybody in, she, and don't, uh, don't try to cook anything. Don't turn on the stove so she said she wouldn't she's a pretty good kid she knows what she can have and what she can't I better call and check on her text her or something here in a little while so the other one she's about ready to go back to her boyfriend I think she said she's missing him and I'm getting better now so I don't need to have that full-time attention I've got the, if they just bring me my air tanks man they're supposed to bring them to me today, and I called them twice this morning. I haven't heard back from them. I'm still sitting there waiting. I said, "I can." What if I come down to the building? Oh, look at that! What is that? That's there. We go. Oh, what's going on with that? Going round and round. It is. I'll bet you anything. That's why that air is leaking out of there. No, well, I don't know. So, <clears throat> yeah, y'all are going to get this raw. I can't, I don't, I don't know if I, my computer's, my daughter got on the computer while I was gone and she played with it and did something to it and now it's on dark mode and I, oh man, I, the whole thing's messed up. It's not what I'm used to. So now I don't know what I'm doing with it. I got, I wanted to dye my hair. Look at that. See how white my hair is turning? I wanted to dye, bleach this part that's dark and dye it that blue again. But my, I'm afraid to do it because my lungs are weak. I can't babysit for my grandson because my, I can't be around the animal dander. And they got two cats and two dogs. And, and I can't be around that. I can't got to try to cut down on the dust. I can't do anything with my rocks because my ro I, I can't cut my rocks or anything because I don't have the... Um, respirator to use and I can't I can't use just a regular mask it doesn't protect enough to protect my lungs so I'm just in a mess I can't do anything I tried to have a sale of chunk of raw rock yesterday thinking somebody might want some of that but nobody's buying anything but that one guy said that my camera kept going like that but I couldn't help it because I couldn't find my tripod my daughter had moved the, the um, tub it was in. I had three tri I have three tripods and I was trying to put it in there but I couldn't find it. So I was holding the camera with my hand trying to have that show when I was trying to want my other hand I had trying to get pick the rocks up and get them wet so because if you get them wet it brings the color out. So that's what I was doing trying to make just barely an, there's my daughter. Look at that behind her. What the hell is she doing over there? Anyways, all right, well, I'm going to go see about her. She see about me. I'll talk to y'all later. Get that COVID shot.
if you don't like it, then don't do it. But I'm, t I'm just telling you what I went through. Let me tell you, I'm still not right. I don't have 100% mental clarity. I'm tired too much, way up and too many times of the day. I have to be tethered to that damn oxygen. And then I got, uh, some, I, I had to go buy some new snacks because my nose was screwed up. You have to put, because you have to wear this, then you have these little tubes of stuff. You have to put stuff up in your nose because I guess that, that MRSA lives in your nose sometimes. And so to keep yourself from getting MRSA in your lungs, you have to put that stuff up in there. It's a mess. And then you gotta go, you can't make it to the toilet in time sometimes and you poop yourself. It's, it, one lady told me she was vomiting. I didn't vomit, but I'm pooping myself. 61 years old. And my bedroom is, my bathroom is it's en suite, as they call it. It's right next to my bedroom. And I can't even make it to the toilet. So what are you going to do? I'm going to get off of here, like I said. I love y'all. Talk to you later. I'm going to try to get this uploaded. Bye-bye.